This is the second video in a series of three videos about random forest. In the first video, we saw how to create a simple random forest model, look at probabilities of prediction, and how does the performance of model change as the number of trees increase. In this video, we'll look at hyperparameter tuning. The approach that will follow for hyperparameter tuning is not limited to only random forest. It can be applied to other techniques apart from random forest, but we'll take the example of random forest in this case. The data set and the problem statement that we'll be using in this video have been discussed in the previous video, so you can go back and refer to that. This notebook will be available on GitHub and Kaggle, and the links will be in the description box. Let's jump right into it. The first step is to import the relevant modules and libraries. As we are working with the random forest classifier, therefore we need to import this class from scikit-learn. We also need to import randomized search CV and grid search CV from scikit-learn's model selection. These are the two approaches that can be used for cross-validation and hyperparameter tuning, and I will discuss both of them. The next step after importing the relevant modules is to look at what is the data available. What we'll do now is import train.csv using pandas read csv function and store the output in a data frame. Then we'll split the data frame into independent x variables and the dependent y variable. You can see there are 200 independent variable and the number of observations that we have is 200,000. Let's look at the first approach for hyperparameter tuning and cross validation. It is called randomized search CV. You will have to specify a list of different hyperparameter values and randomized search CV will pick up some of these values randomly, some of the combination of these hyperparameter values randomly and give the performance of model. It's different from a grid search approach where we try all different combinations of hyperparameter. So before we start using it, let's look at what are the parameters available for a random forest. We can use get params function of random forest classifier to list down all the possible parameters with the default values. You can see there are so many different values that can be tuned. We'll pick up some of the important ones and provide them for hyperparameter tuning. So that is the next step. I have chosen six hyperparameters to tune. The first step is to provide a list of values for each of these hyperparameter. Let me take an example. The first high parameter that I'm looking at is number of estimators, which is essentially the number of trees that will be part of random forest model. I've created a list which ranges from 10 to 220 with the interval of 50. If I scroll down to show you how this will look like, you can see the values are 10, 60, 110 and so on. Let me take one more example. It is criterion list. Criterion is used to specify how is the best fit calculated for a decision tree. There are two possible values, Genie and Entropy, and I've provided both as part of this list. Similarly, for the remaining four hyperparameters, I've specified the list of values. What we now need to do is convert these lists into a dictionary. So the dictionary that we have created is param underscore grid. I also wanted to understand how many combinations of values I get when I take the possible range of values for the six parameters that I provided. So this is a simple loop where essentially what I'm doing is finding out the length of each of these arrays and multiplying them to provide me what are the total number of combinations of these hyperparameters values. I'm printing them and you can see that the number of combination is 1600. Also, I have printed the dictionary with all the hyperparameter values. This dictionary will be used for randomized search CV. So we'll create an instance of the class randomized search CV where we'll be providing certain arguments. I will go over each of these arguments one by one. The first one is estimator, which is essentially the technique that we'll be using for building the model. We have used random forest classifier here. Parents distribution is the dictionary with all the possible parameter values. And we have specified what we had created earlier. Number of iteration is specified as 50. And this is important because as I mentioned in randomized search CV, not all combinations of hyperparameter values are tried out. In this case, only 50 out of those 1600 combinations will be tried out. CV value is three, which means for cross validation, the data will be split into three equal halves. There will be three iterations for every combination of hyperparameter combination. And for each of these three iterations, one of the three samples of the data will be used as the validation data set and the two will be used for training. 
I have also specified scoring parameter which tells randomized search CV what is the scoring metric it should use. In my case, I want to use area under the curve. Function that is provided for calculating area under the curve by scikit-learn is matrix.rockaoc score. But the format of this function is different from what scoring parameter of randomized search CV requires. Therefore, I have created a wrapper which is my rock AOC score, which takes three arguments instead of two. The arguments is model, the x variables, and y variable. And that is a wrapper that I have created, which I specify as a callable object for the scoring parameter. Return train score is equal to true. Make sure that for every iteration, the function is also returning the training score apart from the validation score. And verbose specifies what is the level of logs that will be printed. We call the fit function on the object of model underscore RF. We specify our X variables and Y variables. You can see that because we have cross validation value of three, it is putting three folds for each 50 candidates, total 155th. So essentially there are 150 iterations that will happen in total. After this process is done, you can look at one of the attributes, which is best params, which will tell you the best combinations of hyperparameter, which provided the best performance on the validation data set. The other approach here is to you look at another attribute, which is CV results. Uh, so model RF dot CV underscore results underscore. And this will give you the result of all the iterations from the cross validation. This can be converted into pandas data frame. I have selected only limited set of columns here, sorted it based on the rank on the test score and then shown the top 20 values. You can see the best parameter combination here matches the best params attribute that we saw earlier. Now this is the first approach for hyperparameter tuning and cross validation where only a sample or a random sample out of all the possible hyperparameter combination is taken for cross validation. The other approach is grid search CV where all possible combination of hyperparameter values are taken for evaluating the model and doing the cross validation. So the steps that will follow are essentially the same, but there are few differences. First, I've created the list of all possible hyperparameter values. The number of values that I've kept in each of these arrays is lesser this time because we want to try all possible combination and this can take a lot of time. All these arrays have been converted into a data dictionary. As you can see, the number of combination this time we have is 24. And now we'll create an object of grid search CV. You can see the arguments are very similar to what we had earlier. The main difference is that we are not specifying number of iterations because right now when we call grid search CV, all possible combinations of hyperparameter will be evaluated. When we call the fit function, you can see that the 24 combinations of hyperparameter that we have are tried three times as the cross validation values three totaling to 72 fits. We can repeat the same process, look at the output in the form of CV results converted to a pandas data frame and look at the output of all hyperparameter combination values. But then we can also look at the same attribute that we saw earlier, which is best params, which will give us the best out of all the combinations of hyperparameters that we have. We can use these best parameters to fit our random forest classifier. As you can see, all the attributes that I've specified are from the best param values of the previous step. After we create an object of random forest classifier type, which is model RFN, we call the fit function on the entire data set. And then we can look at what is the AOC value on the final model that we have. So this is how we do hyperparameter tuning in Python. In the next video, we'll look at more details of random forest, which will include feature importance and partial dependence. If you have any questions, you can write them in comment section. Thank you for watching the video.